That's a great horned owl. They live in the oak trees in my backyard and they talk to one another. I've never seen one, but I hear him. We're gonna be doing a great horned owl lesson today. I can't wait, it's gonna be fun. Welcome back. All right, we are gonna get ready to draw our great horned owl. This beautiful owl, as I mentioned, lives in my backyard. I've never seen him up close, but I can hear him in the evening time. And he has a friend that he talks to and they can chitter chat back and forth at night. They sound like this. So today I'm gonna to give you a couple options. Um, you can use markers, you can use crayons, you can use markers and a wet paintbrush and paint it the way I did mine, or you can just keep it very bold using the markers by themselves. I'm going to give you a couple different options when it comes to our coloring part later. But for the drawing part, I want you, if you're planning on doing paint, meaning you're going to take your watercolor markers and you're going to be painting with a paintbrush, you're going to want to use watercolor paper if you have it. I use some construction paper and that works too, but it does get a little wrinkly on the side. So if you have watercolor paper, that will work a little better for your markers. Um, if you do not have watercolor paper, just use construction paper or your multimedia paper will work also. Now, if you don't have either of those and you just have the paper that comes out of your printer, you can use marker on that, but it will be a little bit more wrinkly. Now, if you don't have markers and you want to do it with crayon, I think it turns out beautiful with crayon. As a matter of fact, I like the sky better using the side of a broken crayon. So I might kind of mix the two mediums together. So I might use crayon and marker. I haven't decided yet. All right, so these are the things you're going to look for in your house. You're going to need a piece of paper. I'm going to be using watercolor paper. It's a little thicker. You're going to need a background piece of paper if you're gonna be painting. So you're gonna put some paper towels underneath you. I'm gonna be using this dirty paper here that I always use. But if you have some paper towels or newspaper, just place that underneath where you're gonna be painting. If you're planning on painting, you're going to need crayons. Regardless of whether you're going to be using the markers or not, you're still gonna want some crayons. You're gonna need a pencil. You're going to need an eraser. You're going to need markers, possibly, if you're planning on painting. And the markers need to be a water-based marker like Crayola or Rose Art, not Sharpie marker. We're not gonna be working with a Sharpie marker today. The other thing that you're gonna need is a paintbrush if you're planning on painting. So some kind of paintbrush for waking up your uh, paint. And if you're, I mean, waking up your marker, and if you are planning on painting, you're gonna need a little bowl of water. So water, and of course, a napkin for cleaning your brush. So these are the items you're gonna need. Let's go through them one more time. A napkin, water, if you're planning on painting, a paintbrush, if you're planning on painting, markers that are water-based, if you're planning on painting, crayons, no matter what a pencil, an eraser, and a piece of paper. The paper should be thick like watercolor paper or your multimedia paper or construction paper. If you're planning on using the markers, you'll get a better uh, finished product with it. All right, let's begin by using a pencil and an eraser first. And so I'm gonna have you pause the video, gather those items and meet me back here. All right, welcome back, let's begin. So the first thing you're going to be doing is making your paper tall like a door. If you notice, our beautiful great horned owl is very tall. The shape of our owl is like a big oval. So we're gonna be really simplifying our owl by making a big chubby oval. We're also gonna be giving him some little tufts of feathers right up here. But first, we're gonna find the center of our paper, like we always do. Once you find the center of your paper, you're gonna make a dot. And then we're gonna start by making a large U around us. Now, to make our oval, we're actually gonna start by making the letter U. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna 
take my pencil and I'm going to bring it almost down to the bottom of the paper. I got to save some room though for his feet and a branch. I'm just going to go like this and I make a really fat U. Now remember, this is the only thing we're putting on our paper, so you don't want to have a tiny little owl. I'm saving room at the bottom so I can put his feet. Now once I've done that, I'm going to come up here to the top and I'm going to round the top kind of like an egg. And I'm going to bring the photo back so you can see the top of his head. Look right here. Now, I always thought these were horns. He's called a great horned owl. But when I looked at it close up, those aren't horns at all. They're feathers. They're called the tufts of feathers, tuft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a horn kind of shape at first, but it's not going to stay a horn for long. Then I'm going to bring it down, kind of like I'm making a cat ear. As a matter of fact, I have a pet cat, Molly, and Molly looks a lot like this owl. They have the same shape as head. If these were Molly's ears, those look like her ears, and she has big eyes, just like an owl. They do kind of look similar, except obviously she doesn't have a beak. Now, the neat thing about the great horned owl that's different than the other owls is he has right here, this big fringe of feathers that comes down and it forms a large letter of the alphabet. What letter do you see right there? See the V? So we're gonna do that by taking and making a large letter V also. So I'm gonna start right here from the tip of this ear and I'm gonna bring it down into the face. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And I have my little dot here to kind of help me find the center. And then once I have that, we'll switch it out and make it more feathery later. Now right here is where we're going to start the beak. So look at the beak right here. It's rounded at the top and a point at the bottom. So I'm gonna come right here and round it right at the tip. Make a little curve. And then make a point at the bottom. Now I can erase this middle dot. I don't need that anymore. And then we're gonna make some huge eyes. So we're gonna come right here to the side of the beak. And I'm going to start right next to the beak, and I'm going to start to draw a round circle that comes all the way around and connects back up to the top here. So part of that circle is covered up by this little section of feathers. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, touching the beak right here. I'm going to come down and around. and bring it back up to the top. Now is about the time that I'm gonna check my work and make sure that my eyes are about the same size. And then I'm gonna add the eyeballs. Now, this is an interesting fact about owls. Owls cannot move their pupils side to side. You know how we can move our eyes up or down? Owls can't. They actually have to turn their head in order for them to see. So if you've ever seen any videos of owls, when they turn their head, it looks like they can turn their head almost all the way around. They're able to turn their head from the front all the way to the back and look behind them and then rotate at the opposite direction also because they can't move their eyes. Their eyes are kind of like headlights on a car. They don't move. So we're gonna draw our pupil right in the center and we're gonna make it really big because we're gonna be coloring this with a crayon. So we wanna make it pretty large. And you wanna make sure that your pupils are the same height, top and bottom. Looks like this one might be a little higher than the other one. 
practice, do your best. And then when I'm finished with that, I notice there is a whole nother section of feathers surrounding the eyes. So the eyes are here, and then there's this section of feathers here and here. See that? So I'm going to copy that by tracing another circle around the eyes. We're going to change it later. Right now, we're just making a little circle. And this is going to be black. This will be yellow. And this will color a soft brown. All right, going back to our photograph, I'm going to look up here. We can see that this isn't straight, it's kind of wobbly. So when we get to our crayon, we're going to change this. And also, the tufts of feathers here on the horn part, which is not a horn, it's feathers, um, is also very fringy and soft. So we're going to make that with our crayon. We're going to kind of scribble, scrabble that. All right, now look at the chest, all the fun pattern kind of looks like the letter U over and over and over across the chest. So we're going to take our pencil and we're going to make some large letter U across the chest. But before we do that, let's give our owl a wing. So I'm just going to kind of cut a part of the side of the body here and I'm going to match it on this side. And then I'm going to make the wing a little wider on this side. See, I'm bringing it a little bit larger than the body. You know, it went a little bit wider here. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Just come right here from the side of the face and bring it out. And bring it back. And then make its head a little fatter too. And then the final part is going to be under here when we add his feet. Before we do that, let's start right here, right underneath the beak and make a really large letter U. And then I'm gonna make another one next to it and one on the end, and then I'm gonna match it on this side. Make sure you do these big because we have to kind of trace over them with a crayon later. I'm gonna match the same thing again and again. You just make as many as fit. Now at the bottom, I'm going to add some fun feet. So to make his feet, I'm going to be making kind of a rainbow shape like this. that kind of goes underneath him. So here's the bottom of his body. I'm just going to make a little rainbow shape that goes up through his body. We can erase this later on one side. So here's the middle of them right here. I want to have one foot on one side of the middle and one foot on the other. You can have the feet separated. You can make them super tiny if you want to. You can make them big. It's totally up to you. And then once I make this kind of rainbow shape like this, I'm going to come down below the end of the rainbow in the middle right here. I'm going to make a really wide V. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this foot. So I'm going to go below these two lines right here and make a really wide V. That's going to be his middle toe. And then we're just going to connect this line down here. So I'm like in, kind of making like the letter M down and then down here and connect here to make that, see how it looks like an M? And go down here and then connect the side of the foot down to that bottom. And down here and connect. And then we can erase this little bit right here because the feet are tucked up underneath his stomach. So I'm going to erase the top of that little rainbow shape here and here. And then I'm going to erase this side here. We don't need that inside of his wing anymore. And here.
And now we're gonna get ready to start coloring. Before we do that, I want you to look inside the eye. Is there a lot of pencil line inside there? You wanna erase that before we start to color your eyes with the yellow crayon. So really go in there and erase it nicely. And we're gonna start with yellow here in this circle that's right next to the smaller circle. So when you get your yellow crayon, and you're going to trace this circle, not the small one, but the medium one, this one right here. I'm going to trace this little outline right there. And you're going to use your yellow crayon and you're going to color this section in. So what I do is I kind of outline that circle in the middle because that part will color black later. And then I'm just going to fill the space in first. So I kind of like to do the lightest colors first. Do a really good job coloring that bright yellow. So great horned owls have yellow eyes. They have really large eyes compared to some of the other owls that I was learning about. However, they don't necessarily use their eyes as their best hunting tool. Their ears are their best hunting tool. They have really, really good hearing. And they can even hear a rat if it's hiding underneath leaves or if there's an animal that's hiding underneath the snow, the owl can still hear it, even if it's underneath the snow and catch it. Great horned owls are very good at catching their prey and they have strong feet and the toes of the great horned owl can grab the animal and he can't get away. He has really strong feet. Even though they look very tiny, their claws are very strong. All right, so we finished our yellow on the eyes. Now the next color I see in my owl that's a light color is orange. Do you see all that orange? Beautiful, isn't it? So let's get an orange crayon now. We'll put our yellow back in our cup, or back in your box, and you're gonna get an orange crayon now. And we're gonna add a little orange. So first thing I'm going to do with my orange is I'm gonna add an outline of orange around my eye, just to make it show up a little bit more. And I noticed Maybe you see this too. I see a little orange at the top of the yellow eye. Do you see that? So I'm going to scribble, scrabble, just a little bit of orange at the top of my yellow eye. Not very hard, just a little bit. And then I'm going to take my orange crayon and I'm going to scribble it all over very softly the top. Now I know we're gonna be using a marker later, so I'm doing this very softly. The marker is going to turn into paint when we wet it with water. So I don't wanna color this real hard. I'm just putting a little bit of orange there. Now I'm gonna also put some orange around the side of his face and a little bit down his wing. Now, I'm not using a whole bunch of crayon. Now, if you're not gonna be using a marker, then you're gonna to want to color a little bit more careful and you can just kind of go at it and have fun. Now, the next place I'm gonna put a little bit of orange is very lightly. I'm just gonna scribble a couple little stripes very softly across his chest. Now you can see, I didn't scribble very hard. I'm doing it very lightly. And when I'm finished with my orange, I'm gonna put that color back in the cup. And then the next color I'm going to look for is a brown crayon. So now I'm gonna take my brown crayon. I'm gonna do the same thing and add a little scribble of brown on the wing. a little bit of brown on the top of his head. Now do you see, I'm not doing this perfect. I'm just lightly scribbling a little bit of scribble of stripes across his chest. 
still leaving a lot of white paper showing. And then I'm going to take my brown and I'm going to very softly color that circle around the eye. And see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of very lightly scribbling those circles or you can scribble back and forth. I'm just putting it very softly there. I don't want it really dark, just a little bit, just to kind of fill in that space around the eye. When I'm finished with that, I'm going to put my brown back in my cup. And then my final color I'm going to grab in my crayons is black. So black is my drawing color. This is the one I'm going to use the most. And I'm going to press a little harder when I use the black. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline the top of his head. And then I'm going to outline the top of his ear. And if you notice, I said ear. This is not his ear. His ears are hidden on the side of his head. You can't see them. It looks like an ear. This is just a tuft of feathers. And sometimes they can tuck those feathers down so their head looks round. And sometimes they can pop those up very high, but they're not their ears. I thought that they were horns or ears because he's called a great horned owl, but it's actually just a tuft of feathers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of make it look a little bit more furry on the edge by scribble scrabbling our black crayon like this. Then we're gonna trace the outline of our owl all the way around the wing. And on the other side of the wing. And then we're gonna do the side of his body here. Remember how we started with the letter U? And we're going to outline the part of the feet that show. And we're going to come back up here now and start working from the top of his head down. So the first part we're going to work on is this letter V right here. I'm going to start right here, make a little light dot. And you can either do a straight line or you can kind of make it wobbly like this. I'm going to make mine a little bit more wobbly. Kind of like I'm making short little curves like this. You can do a straight line if you'd like to. This section of the feathers makes him kind of look like he's angry. His eyes look angry, but he's not angry. Now I'm going to go right here and I'm going to trace the black pupil. And I'm going to leave a little white shiny light at the top. So I'm just going to make the letter U on the same side of each eye. And I'm going to carefully come in and color with my crayon his pupil. Now when I'm done, then I'm going to retrace the yellow eye. And then I'm going to trace the beak, which was a curve, and then the letter V. And then beak, I'm going to color very softly with my crayon because his beak is not black, it's kind of gray. I'm going to color very softly. And then remember, we have that side part of the feathers around his eyes. Do you remember that right here? So I'm going to kind of take my crayon 
and go around the side, forming a half of a circle. That comes up around the beak. Next, remember we made those letter U's. I'm going to just take my crayon, go across those letter U's. You can make as many as you want. And then I'm going to take my gray, my crayon. I'm going to color the feet gray or black. I'm going to make mine gray, like the photograph. I'm not coloring very hard. And then the final part is to decide if you would like your owl standing on a branch. If you want to have him standing on a branch, we're going to draw a line right underneath his feet. Doesn't have to be straight. And then we're going to draw another line that goes across and right underneath his bottom. Now to make it look like a branch, we can draw a few lines that go through the branch. Now you're going to have to maybe jump over his toes a little bit. And then when you're finished, you can go ahead and put your black back in the cup. All right, now, I had told you earlier, you had two options. One was to work with markers if you want to paint. And what you'll do is you'll use the marker as a tool for drawing the color on, and then we'll wet it with the paintbrush to wake it up. We've done this before in other projects. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can continue to color with crayons. Now, I have an idea. I want you to see if you have any broken crayons in your house. If you have any broken crayons, you can take a broken black crayon and peel the wrapper off, and you can use it for making the background. Now, in this picture here, I used my marker as the background. But in this picture, I told you earlier, I kind of liked the background using my crayon. So if you have a broken crayon, you can take your crayon like this and you can just pull it across the paper. So I'm going to turn my paper to show you. And you can color the sky very quickly using a broken crayon. So because it doesn't have the wrapper on it, I can color. Look at how fast I can color the sky. And you can make the sky very dark around your owl. And then don't forget, you would also want to color the sky underneath the branch because that would be dark also. So look at how quick I got my sky done by using a broken crayon. Now, if you don't have a broken crayon, you can just use the tip and color it this way same way you normally would. You can also use a marker the way I did it on this picture. And then you can wet it with a paintbrush and wake it up and turn it into paint. Speaking of waking it up and turning it into paint, I want to show you how fun this is. So the colors I'm going to be using for my owl are the colors I see in the photograph. So I'm going to be using orange and brown and maybe a little bit of black. So these are the only colors I'm going to be using for my owl. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some orange because I do see a lot of orange in his body and in his head. And I'm just going to scribble, scrabble a little bit of orange. Now, as you can see, I'm not coloring the entire thing. I'm just putting kind of a scribble amount. I'm going to just put a little bit of orange on his wings. A little bit inside the tuft. And then we'll come back to that color in just a minute. I'm going to show you how this works. Now I'm also going to take a little bit of brown and I'm going to scribble scrabble some brown stripes through the orange. I'm not going to use the black yet. So you see I'm just really quick scribbling a little bit of brown up here. 
maybe a little bit more on the ends of the tuft and a little bit at the top. All right, now I won't use the black yet, but we'll come to that in a minute. And I'm gonna get my paintbrush. I'm gonna wet it in my little bowl of water. I'm gonna make sure my napkin is ready. And then I'm gonna take my paintbrush now and I'm gonna to start to wake up the marker. Now look what happened. As I brush it across that paper with that water, the marker melts, the ink melts, and it turns into watercolor paint. So now I'm getting this beautiful kind of orangey brown color, just like the picture we saw of the owl. I get some more color on my brush. You can see I made my own watercolor paint by using my marker. I'm gonna paint very carefully. I don't wanna get any paint in his eyes. I'm gonna paint the top of his head. I'm adding a little bit more water to wake up that marker. And then if I have any puddles, I'm gonna scoop up that color with my brush, add a little bit more water to it. And now I can use whatever's left over on my brush across his tummy. If I add a little water to it, it goes even farther. Scoop up this color here, get a little bit more water on my brush and make another stripe across the body. So I'm not even using my marker right now. I'm just using this leftover color and making new color on his chest. And then I'm just gonna add more water. I'm not using any more marker. I'm just using the water and the leftover color in my brush. I can paint his chest. And I can use this leftover color and paint the feathers around his eye. I want that a little bit lighter than this color on the outside. So I'm just using a tiny bit of water to wake up that color. And then I'm gonna take my brown marker and I'm gonna run it along the branch down here. I'm skipping over his toes. We're gonna to get to the feet in just a minute. Now, when I'm done putting the brown on my branch, I'm gonna wake it up. Adding a little water to my brush. I'm gonna paint around his feet. Add a little bit more water and I'm gonna just brush those puddles right off the paper. Now, if I have a lot of brown on my brush, I could come up here and I could make some stripes in his wings. I'm just scooping up this leftover brown. And I'm making some stripes. I could also use that leftover brown and paint over my little pattern. I'm just grabbing this leftover brown. I'm not adding any more and I'm just using it to paint across the chest. Now, when you're all finished painting the branch, we're gonna go in and add just a tiny bit of black on the feet. We don't want a lot. So I'm just gonna draw around the toes, kind of outlining them with my black marker. And that is pretty much all the black you're going to need. I'm gonna put a little bit of black on the beak, just at the bottom, kind of like I'm drawing a V. And then I'm gonna clean my brush, make sure it's clean, add a little bit of water to it, and I'm gonna wake up the black and paint his feet. Now you'll notice that once you start to wake up the black, it doesn't look black, it actually has kind of a little bit of green or blue in it. And it makes the prettiest gray. And I'm gonna use that same brush and I'm gonna wake up the beak. And if you have a little bit left over, you can wet your brush again. And once again, you can take your brush and you can make a little bit more stripes or add a little bit to the tuft at the top. So 
hope you had fun chaining our great horned owl with me today. I love teaching you, and I can't wait to do another lesson with you. Now, if you'd like to send me a picture of your beautiful great horned owl that you made, you can send it to rtorres at lcusd.net. I would love to see a picture of your beautiful great horned owl picture. I'll see you next time.